Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everyone. Let's go. Um, Indian Idol. Good morning, y'all. Or most of you guys are European, so it's like 4 p.m. for you. Let's go. Let's get right into it. I need to get started today, and I'm not great at intros in the morning. My name's Connor. If you're new, hello. I like to react to stuff. Let's go. Great War is going to cover the. My name is Indy Nidell, and this channel, The Great War. My name is Indy Nidell, and this channel, HD. The Great War, is going to cover the First World War week by week as it unfolded 100 years later, from today until November 2018. So you can really get a sense of just what happened as it happened. The oh, is this the start? Is it, so this is week one and there are like 200 weeks? Active weeks, the passive weeks, the weeks of carnage and the weeks of hope, we'll follow them all one by one. Okay. And we've made a couple of special episodes about the prelude to war, so you can get some idea of all of the forces in motion. We've also made a special episode about the assassination of the Archduke and his wife, as it was one of the pivotal moments in our history. All three of these episodes will come out in the next few days. Pay attention. Phones. 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 Away. 100 years ago today, on July 28th, 1914, the Empire of Austria-Hungary declared war on the Kingdom of Serbia. Now, as you are probably aware, this snowballed within days into the First World War. Yeah. Now, people often talk about the blank check. When Kaiser Wilhelm said on July 5th, 1914, that he would unconditionally support Austria in whatever actions she took against Serbia. And this is seen as the main argument for Germany's responsibility for the war. But this is a little too simple. In the days following the assassination of the Austrian Archduke Franz Ferdinand in Sarajevo by the Serb Gavrilo Princip, there were anti serb Serbian riots and demonstrations in much of Bosnia and official dispatches to Vienna. Do we know if Princep was definitely connected to the Serbian government or was he just a random working on his own nationalist? That there was Serbian complicity in the plot. But general European reactions to the killings were quite mild. Austria, however, had big ideas, many of them coming from Army Chief of Staff Konrad von Hotzendorf, and I love that name. Conrad was a vehement imperialist for Austria and Austrian greatness. He's also been described as being, quote, the most dangerous kind of officer, both stupid and intensely energetic. There you have it. In fact, in the year and a half before today, 1914, he asked his government to go to war no less than 26 times. And it's very important to note here that his main counterweight, the man who repeatedly urged Emperor Franz Joseph against war with Russia or war with Serbia not to listen to Conrad, was Archduke Franz Ferdinand, now deceased. The assassination was, to Conrad, a heaven-sent means to curb Serbian power and ambition. Now, to understand the next few uh, blah, blah, blah. Was against war, that his main counterweight, the man who repeatedly urged Emperor Franz Joseph against war with Russia or war with Serbia, the okay. assassination was, okay. to Conrad, a heaven-sent means to curb Serbian power and ambition. Now, to understand the next few weeks, we really need to look a bit at both Germany and Russia. In 1912, the Kaiser had told Army Chief of Staff von Moltke and Grand Admiral von Tirpitz that, quote, Austria had to act vigorously against the foreign Slavs. If Russia were to support the Serbs, war would be inevitable for us. Although we think of pre-war Russia today as a backwater, this was not really the case. Russia had become the world's fourth largest economy by 1914. Okay, shortage. Really? Ahead of the UK, France, Germany, and the. I would think the top four would be Germany, France, UK, and the US, but uh, Russia is larger than one of those? of money had always meant before that she had never been able to build and equip her army like the Germans could, but more importantly, her railways. By 1914, though, Russian currency was on the gold standard, and the railroads were booming, and Russia would be able to easily and quickly defend her borders in only a few years. Now, this was a big fear in the German high command. Since Russia obviously had the manpower advantage, once her railways were a match for Germany, well, German Chancellor von Bethmann Holweg's diary from July 7th tells us these thoughts, that Russia had become a nightmare and that the German generals say there must be a war before it was too late. By 1917, Germany has no hope. So better 1914. 
as an aside here, this was the opinion of the generals and some government leaders, but it was not the opinion of the German people at large. You see, German... So, isn't that a sort of a big strike against Germany and them being a major player in starting the war? I, so they were pretty much looking at at Russia as a as growing and growing, and better to fight them in 1914 than 1917. I Germany had the largest population of socialists in Europe, and they and others comprised a big anti-war segment of society. So the Kaiser wrote on June 30th, the Serbs must be disposed of and right soon. And he did pledge German support for Austria. And he did tell the Austrian ambassador on July 5th that should war between Austria, Hungary and Russia prove unavoidable, Germany would be at Austria's side. However, and this is really important, he also told his chancellor that he did not think there was a real prospect of war, that Russia was not close to being ready. The next day, he went on his annual three-week vacation cruise to Norway, which is kind of not what you do if you were basically the most powerful man in the world and you were about to go to a major war. So in spite of it all, a world war was not on the Kaiser's mind. So. On July 7th, the Austro-Hungarian cabinet met to discuss Serbia, and they were for a war to reduce Serbia's size and make her dependent on Austria. On July 13th, a secret report reached Vienna from Sarajevo that there was zero evidence the Serbian government had anything to do with the assassination. Now, this didn't really change anything, but this did. Franz Joseph finally became convinced that Austria could take action against Serbia without any other powers interfering, so he agreed to issue an ultimatum. The terms of the ultimatum were finalized on July 19th. It had a total of 15 demands, and it linked the Belgrade government with the assassination, even without evidence. Now, you can look up the demands yourself, but here are a couple that really stick out. A lot the of stuff is being cleared up for me already. So great video. The Serbian government must condemn anti-Austrian propaganda and punish anyone who made or distributed it. And the big one, Austrian officials would participate in the judicial process in Serbia. Yep, they would be in charge of justice in another country. So that'd be like if Okay. All right. So they're just they're they're just putting out these demands that they know are going to be denied, right? Now, in order to go to war. As you may guess, this ultimatum was designed to be rejected. It was sent on July 23rd with 48 hours for Serbia to agree to it. 6 p.m. on July 25th, Serbia answered the ultimatum. She agreed that anti-Austrian propagandists would be punished and subversive movements suppressed and actually agreed to almost everything else, but as to Austria participating in the judicial process within Serbia, Serbia simply asked that this demand be submitted to the tribunal in The Hague. Now, everybody except Austria thought this response was just fine, but Austria was determined to go to war. As to Austria, and actually agreed to almost everything else, but as to Austria participating in the judicial process within Serbia, Serbia simply asked that this demand be submitted to the tribunal in The Hague. Now, everybody except Austria thought this response was just fine, but Austria was determined to go to war. Actually, Russia suggested two days later that negotiations between her and Vienna should be opened to try and sort things out. This was refused. A British attempt the same day to talk Germany into having a four-power conference to also try to sort things out was rejected as well. And you know what? Here's something that happened then that remained secret until after the war. On July 28th, 100 years ago today, Kaiser Wilhelm finally read the full text of the Austrian ultimatum and Serbia's response. And he could see no reason at all for Austria to declare war. Yep, after all this had happened, the Kaiser wrote, a great moral victory for Vienna, but with it, every reason for war is removed. And just about an hour after the Kaiser scribbled out in the margins, Emperor Franz Joseph signed a declaration of war on Serbia. Have I been hating on, on Wilhelm II more than I should have? Margins. Emperor Franz Joseph signed a declaration of war on Serbia.
confident of German support. And that declaration would turn out to be the death warrant of his own empire. We'll see you next week. Click subscribe to get each and every episode as it comes out. And if you like the show, but English isn't your best language, once again, this show is also available in German and Polish. You can find links to those channels below. Really? Now, I'm sure many of you have comments, ideas, and suggestions. We're happy to hear them. Awesome video. Um, great. I'm going to watch part two right after this. I'm, I'm almost tempted to just put it in the same video. I'll do I'll do a different video. All right, I'll, I'll I'll start the next one soon. By the way, I am news for next time. See you next time.